welcome yogis to my channel on Penny of Yoga with Penny. And today a level one Hatha practice. It's a level one Hatha flow. You just have a couple of blocks and perhaps a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, use a scarf or a necktie. Um, that'll work just as well. And if you don't have yoga blocks, get creative. Use um, some books, thicker books. Make sure you have two of even size or something else. Um, that resembles the shape of a yoga block. If you're new to yoga, you can do this practice. Just make sure you honor your body and only do the postures that your body will allow you to go into. Do not force anything on your body. If you're feeling the pose, and I will tell you where you need to feel it, you're doing the pose. Okay. So just find yourself in a seated position. Root the sitting bones, and if you're not comfortable, in a seated position with your bum on the earth, you can always sit up on a block. And wherever feels comfortable here, roll the shoulders up, back and down. Allow the eyes to close, draw the belly slightly in to support the low back. Today we'll focus on flexibility and mobility throughout the body. But for right now, just let everything go. The only thing that matters is what is on your yoga mat. You and your yoga mat. Give yourself this time. With your eyes closed, just bring the awareness to all the sounds that are around you. Far away sounds. And sounds closer in without pushing any sounds away or without trying to name the sounds, just allow the sounds to be in your field of awareness. Bring your awareness to the belly breath without changing the breath in any way. Just watch the rise and fall of the belly with the breath. Making sure your spine is nice and long, lifting out of the low back. And watching your breath, every inhale and every exhale is watched. And now keeping your eyes closed for this one, let's practice a few cycles of the Loma breath, the Loma is the interrupted breath. It's very calming, actually. So just take a big breath into the nose and out the nose. And this time, a nice deep breath into the nose. And exhale one third out and pause. Exhale two thirds out and pause. Exhale all the way out. Again, a nice deep, uninterrupted inhale. Exhale one third, two thirds, and all the way out. Do that two more times together. Inhale deeply all the way up. Exhale one third, pause. Two thirds, pause. And all the way out. One more time. Nice deep breath in. So one third. Two thirds. And all the way out. And come back to a natural breath. And then setting your intentions for your practice, bring the palms together, keeping the eyes closed. Thumbs at the sternum and Anjali Mudra. Whatever it is your heart would like to manifest, either for this practice or for in life, state that intention to yourself three times as if it's already happened with full feeling and awareness. Take a big breath in. 
and exhale, allow the intention to go for now. Open your eyes. We're going to start out on our backs. So release whatever it is that you might be sitting on off to the side. And grab your strap. Coming down onto your back nice and slow. Hug the knees in. Give your low back a little stretch here. Then so release the left foot to the earth. Take your strap and bring your strap around your right foot. And the strap goes right underneath the ball of the foot, right on the arch where the ball, the foot, and the arch meet. And just take one strap in each hand, draw those elbows down to the earth, shoulder blades pressed against the mat. Shoulder blades press against the mat and feel a stretch in the belly of the right hamstring. Elbows rest on the earth, flexing your toes slightly towards your face. You do not have to straighten the right knee. You can keep a little bend here. And then the left knee can remain bent, foot on earth, or you can extend that left foot long. And you're just getting stretch in the hamstring, opening up the leg channels. And you're breathing here, cleaning out the nose. Switch to the next posture. Take both the straps to your right hand. Bring your left arm out like a wing on the floor. And then roll open that right leg. Feeling a stretch on the inner thigh. And again, if you're feeling this pretty deeply, you can come up a little bit until you feel it about 80%. You don't want to go to 100% of your edge straight off. You're just starting to warm the body up. You want to honor the body and not go too far. And let's bring that right leg all the way up. You can bend the knee as you transition if you need to. Switch the straps to your left hand, right arm out like a wing. And roll onto that left hip, bringing your right leg over to the right side. You're going to feel this in the right low back, hip, the IT band. This is the most intense of the three um, stretches. So make sure you're breathing. Send the breath right into that deepest sensation you feel. Big inhale, just bring that right leg all the way up. Maybe allow the left foot to join and the strap with the right. Again, a bend in the knees is fine as long as you're feeling in the middle of the hamstring and not up by the gluteal crease. All right. And just take a little stretch here with both legs. Notice the right leg compared to the left. It may feel a little more open. And then releasing the right foot to the earth. Make sure that strap is right below the ball of the foot, the top of the arch, the left foot. All right, shoulder blades down, one palm in each strap. Draw the elbows all the way down to the earth so your shoulders don't get involved. And then feel your stretch again. You can keep the right knee bent or extend the right leg long, right heel on the earth. Feel that side. This side's a little tighter on these. Just notice on your own body. Which side may be a little more open, which side might have a little more tightness. And maybe they're both even. The goal is just to be aware. All right, switch the straps to the left hand, right arm out like a wing, and then open up that left leg out to the left, stretching the left inner thigh. Make sure that right hip pretty much remains down. It might pop up a little bit. Okay, but you don't want to roll all the way to the left. That's why we kind of have this right arm out on this side. It's kind of like a little anchor. Right, drop the belly in, bring that left leg all the way up. Switch straps to your right hand. Now the left arm out like a wing. And here we go with that left IT band. This one's just as tight. So breathe into that left hip, IT band, that left low back. 
Imagine you're ballooning that whole side out with the breath. Releasing a little tension with the exhale. Enough of that. I draw the belly in, bring that left leg up. Bend the knee, move the strap off to whatever side feels good. And hug those knees into the chest. Keep a low back stretch. And either rolling to your side and pressing yourself up or rocking like a ball a few times. All the way to the seated pose. And from your seated pose, Find yourself into a child's pose. So come to the knees. Bring the knees back to the middle of the mat. Wide knees. Again, you can place a bum on your a bum on a block if your knees are tight. Or you can come all the way down. Hips on the heels, forehead on the earth. And then just sink into your child's pose for a few breaths. Remembering your intention again right here in the practice, whatever it was. If you didn't set one, don't worry about it. You can set it now. Or know that your higher power, God, universe, whatever you want to call it, already knows what you need and it's already being done for you. But if you did set an intention, go ahead and state that intention once again to yourself, the full feeling and awareness as if it's already happening. Draw the palms underneath the shoulders. Press yourself up to an all fours position and let's start some cat and cow cycles. So cow pose, you drop the belly, raise the sit bones, raise the gaze, press the shoulder blades against the back ribs with a big inhale. And then exhale to cat pose, tuck your chin, press the palms into the earth and down your spine. And then just move through a few cycles of this just to balance the spine. And if you want a little wrist stretch while you're doing this and it feels good, you can turn the fingers to face the knees. Just be mindful of your wrists. If they don't like this, then don't do it. And then turn the palms to face the side of the mat and just wiggle back and forth a little bit here. All right, turn the palms to face forward. One more fast time, just press back to a child's pose and turn your palms to face the sky and pump your fists a few times just to release out the wrists. And then turn the palms face over, walk your palms forward, coming into our first downward facing dog, curl the toes under, press your torso towards your thighs as you lift the knees. And then really slowly start to straighten those knees out. Now it's okay if you don't get the legs totally straight. It's okay if the heels don't touch the earth. What I would like for you is to have a nice loose neck. So sh just shake your head no a couple times and then let your head go. And then bring your awareness to your palms. And spread the four fingers. Don't spread the thumb wide. Keep that a pretty much neutral, but spread the four fingers nice and wide. Press into the base of the index finger, press into the thumb and the finger pads. And kind of lift the center of the palm up. That protects your wrist a little bit here. And then finish pedaling, maybe pressing the heels towards the earth. Again, if they don't touch, mine don't touch. I have tight calves and that's just my body. And I still feel my downward dog. So now bring attention to the tops of the thighs, the tops of the thigh bones and really press them back strong to lengthen through the spine. Take a breath here, and then exhale out. And then take a breath in as you slightly raise that right leg up. And then exhale, low lunge, bringing the right foot forward. Slowly bring the left knee to the earth. Come on down. You can use your blocks here if you need. And then bring both hands on the inside of that right foot, coming into a lizard pose. Heel tying the right foot all the way to the right side of the mat.
And now from here, you can just stay here. You can come down to forearms. Or you can do a little twist here by pressing the right palm into the right knee and just opening up that right hip a little bit. Left leg is long. Now, if you want a little bit more, you can bend that left knee, take your right hand, and find the right quadricep. That's a quad stretch there in the left side. Make sure those shoulder blades are against the back ribs. Take a couple breaths here. And release. Back to lizard pose. Grab your blocks. Okay. And you're going to press up into your lizard with your hands underneath your blocks. And if you don't need blocks, that's okay. And coming all the way to Skandasana pose, you're going to lift that back knee up. Let's do a twist first. So plant the left palm on the earth. Rotate the right arm to the sky. Open up, keeping that left knee over the left. I'm sorry, right knee over the right knee. And open and then exhale down. Find those blocks and start to walk yourself all the way to the other side of the mat in Skandasana. So you're going to see the back side first. And trying to get that uh, left heel down, if you can't, the heel's up a little bit, just be mindful of your body. Now I like to come all the way down with my left heel, my right toes face my body. But again, if you're a little bit more up, just make sure you're drawing the belly in to protect the low back, just feeling a stretch on that right, right leg. Breathe. All right, let's go all the way to the other side. So use your blocks or your palms or no hands at all. Skandasana with your left leg long and right heel on the earth, or maybe it's off a little bit. Those toes can be up or down. Shoulder blades back and down, belly's drawn in. And let's go to each side one more time. Press into the palms or the blocks, come up all the way over. Right leg long, left heel down or just slightly up, gazing towards the right big toe. Big inhale, and as you exhale, all the way to the other side. And then you're going to lower all the way down onto your bottom, coming to half butterfly. Just going to turn around so I can face you here. So half butterfly pose, left knee bent, right leg long. All right, so from here, I'm going to do a little side bend, taking a block on the inside of that right leg, and then up and over you go. Side bend, to keep the shoulders square. Keep the left sit bone on the earth. And then just stretching deeply through that left side. Maybe your gaze is down, maybe your gaze is up, or somewhere between. What feels good to your neck? And then come all the way up. Plant the left palm on the earth outside your left hip, and then lift the hips up. Press the hips forward, draw the belly in, reach that right bicep towards the right ear, and stretch long. And then all the way back down. As you exhale, inhale both arms up to the sky. And then exhale, fold the torso over that right leg. And breathe. Gaze up at that right big toe, start to walk your palms back, turn to the front of the mat, come back into an all fours position, just give it a little wiggle here, curl your toes under, and once again, right back into a downward dog. Settle your feet a little bit, shake the head yes this time, and then let it go, and then press those hips back. Remember to press evenly through all the points of the palm, extending all four fingers wide, and the thumb is neutral. Inhaling the left leg up slightly. You can inhale and then lunge pose as you exhale, slowly lowering the right knee this time down. Bend your left knees over your ankle, shoulders back and down, pressing the heart forward. Take a couple breaths here. You know, you stretch in the front of the right hip this time, it might be a little intense. And then take the left hand on the inside of the left foot. Heel toe the left foot to the left side of the mat, coming into your 
lizard pose, either staying on long arms, or maybe you come down to forearms or forearms on one or two low level blocks. And you can stay here, or you can deepen this a little bit by pressing the left hand into the left knee and rolling to the pinky side edge of the left foot. This might be plenty for you. Okay, honor your body, feeling an external rotation in that left hip and a really big stretch in the front of the right hip. Now, if you still want more, you can bend that right knee, take the left hand behind and give yourself a quad stretch here by drawing in the left foot. Sorry, that's the right foot. <laughs> drawing in that right heel a little further, about 80% of your edge and a release without the boomerang effect. And we're gonna go into those skandasanas in just a second, but let's get a twist first. Planting the right palm on the earth, lifting the right knee up, spin the left arm to the sky, drawing the right ribs towards the left inner thigh. Shoulder blades against the back ribs, almost kissing back there. Nice big inhale. As you exhale, that left palm comes down. Finding skandasana either with or without your block. So you're going to turn now to the right side of your mat and your right knee is going to bend left leg long to begin with. Those toes can be up. Try to get that right heel down. But if you can't, and it's up a little bit, make sure you have support. You're drawing your belly in to protect that low back. Feeling that big stretch, side stretch. Side runner's lunge, also known as skandasana. Okay, and maybe with no hands or maybe use fingertips or block. Let's go all the way to the other side. And into your skandasana. Probably feeling a little bit more because this is your um, third one on each side. So let's get one more on each side. And all the way up. Left leg long. And all the way back up. Right leg long. And then lower down to your bum. So your left leg should be long. I'm just going to switch because I switched earlier. Your left leg is long in your skandasana. Left leg is long in your seated butterfly. Okay. And I'm just going to do that little side bend. So take your block, left forearm on the block, right arm up and over. Okay. Really square those shoulders. Don't let that right shoulder come forward. Bring it back and then reach up and over. Feeling a stretch in the right side this time. And maybe you look up, maybe you look down, but just a couple more breaths here, whatever feels good to you. All right, feels pretty good to me. So I'm gonna pull my belly in, come all the way up. Just put the block off to the side, plant the right palm by the right hip, and then lift those hips up. Give yourself a little stretch to the left side. And then all the way down you go, both arms up with an inhale, exhale, turn towards that left leg this time and fold over. And then gazing up at that left big toe, lengthen the spine, start to walk yourself back up. Coming back into that all fours position, wiggle it out a little bit. And then curl your toes under, walk your palms forward, take an inhale, downward dog as you exhale. And from your downward dog, you're going to start to slowly walk those feet towards the front of the mat. Coming into dangle pose, so allow a little softness in the knees if that feels good. Feet are a little about hip width apart and let your head go. You keep the fingertips on the earth. You can grab opposite elbows here and then just maybe sway side to side a little bit. And then from here, find stillness. Plant the fingertips. Do a half lift here and maybe heel toe the feet just a little closer. The toes don't have to touch, but if they do, that's fine. Shift the weight to the balls of the feet so those hips come over the, the ankles. Take a big breath as you press the crown of the head forward. Exhale, fold, feeling this on the back of the legs, the back of the body. These are quarter sun salutations, so let's do three more. Half lift, inhale, create space between the vertebra. Exhale, fold. Maybe feeling like you're going a little deeper into each one. 
Inhale, half lift. Exhale all the way out as you forward fold. Let's do one more of these. Inhale, half lift. Again, your fingertips can be on your block or your shins or the earth. And then this one, exhale, just melt into your Uttanasana forward fold. All right, half lift, inhale, fold, exhale, root the feet, rise all the way up with an inhale, bring the arms up overhead, palms touch overhead, hands to heart center as you exhale. All right, let's do a few standing postures here. So inhale, the arms up overhead, nice big reach up, maybe a look up if that feels good to your neck, exhale, forward fold. Half lift, inhale. Step back to your downward dog as you exhale. And from here, the right leg floats to the sky with an inhale. We bend the knee and open the hip. Opening the right hip, but squaring the shoulders to the front of the mat. Right leg floats to the sky on an inhale. Warrior two as you exhale. So that right foot comes forward. Fingertips are still on the earth while you lower the left heel to the earth. You have heel to arch alignment and then up you go. Really sinking into that front thigh. Making sure you can see your big toes, so if you can't, maybe moving that right knee out, reaching your fingertips long, gaze down that right middle finger, and then turn the palms up to float the shoulder blades back and down. Keeping the shoulder blades where they are, turn the palms back over. All right, lift and engage that back thigh as you sink a little lower into the front thigh. And then jump to warrior, left palm, left thigh, right arm up. And stretch, beautiful stretch to that right side body. Just keep sinking into that front thigh. And into a side ankle pose. So exhale, right forearm to right thigh. And then left arm either up or you can extend here, bringing the bicep, left bicep towards the left ear. And you can gaze down towards that left big, right big toe. And if you need to, just sink in a little deeper there. Back up with that left arm, coming back to your warrior two, straighten the front leg out, and then shift in that back foot a little. Press your hips forward. Take a big breath here. As you exhale, triangle pose, reach forward with those right fingers, turn the arms in opposite direction. Back of the right palm to the inner, um, inner calf. Maybe it's more at the knee or thigh, or maybe your fingertips are all the way down. But wherever you can maintain, lengthen the legs, squeezing both thighs to lift both kneecaps and root to all four corners of your feet. Scoop that right sitting bone a little towards the left inner heel, and then open, open that left shoulder up just a little bit more. Put a smile on your face. Triangle pose is so good for you. And then back to your warrior two, shifting into half moon pose. I'm gonna to start to um, shift our weight forward. I'm gonna back up because I have a candle flame there. I don't wanna bump into it. So we're gonna shift that Left foot forward and start to come into a half moon pose. So bringing your fingertips to an earth or the block. As you start to lift up that left leg. Engage both quadriceps to lift both kneecaps. Flex heavily through the left toes. And then open the shoulders, stack the shoulders, stack the hips. And if you're wobbly, that's fine. Just come back in if you fall out. Gaze can be up for the full expression or down for um, a very strong expression. And you can stay here. But if you want to, you can go ahead and bend that left knee and see if you can take a bind into Chapasana. Sugar cane pose. And then release without the boomerang effect. Find yourself back into warrior two. Bend the right knee to the left foot plants. And then give yourself a reverse angle here by straightening out the front thigh. And then flow back through warrior two. Put the palms on the inside of the right foot, keeping your legs in warrior two. Start to walk your hands towards the upper corner, left corner of the mat, the front of the mat, coming into a downward dog in your upper body and a warrior two in your lower body. And sink. All right. From here, coming into runner's lunge, walk the palms underneath your nose, turn back left toes to face the front, left heel off the earth, and a runner's lunge. 
from here, you're going to plant the palms, step it back to downward dog, and then just pedal out a little bit. Feel the right side, release. And then pause here. All right, let's do all that on the other side. That left leg close to the sky with an inhale, keeping the shoulders square to the front of the mat. Bend the left knee and open the left hip. Left leg close to the sky on the inhale, warrior two on the exhale, left foot forward, right heel to the earth. And then so you don't have to see my backside, I'm gonna turn around for you, okay? And then up you go into your warrior two, sink into that front thigh, engage and lift the back thigh, press strongly to the pinky side edge of the right foot and the big toe mound extending through the pinky toe mound of the left foot. So really root both feet, all four corners. You wanna ground yourself. This is a very good, um, even though we're standing, it's a very good rooting practice, rooting posture. All right, gaze towards that left middle finger, shoulders back and down, maybe flipping the palms up to do so. And let's do a gentle warrior, right hand, right thigh, left arm up and over, stretch through that left side body. Ooh, the side's just tighter today for me. All right, so take a big inhale here. And then exhale to your side angle pose, maybe left forearm to the left thigh or the fingertips, left fingertips can go down to the earth. You can have your arm up or you can extend here. And just breathe. All right, bringing that right arm back up. Back to your warrior two, let's do triangle pose. Let's go ahead and straighten the front leg, heel toe the right foot in just a little bit. Reach those left fingertips and then turn the arms in opposite directions. Really open up here. Okay, once again, shoulder blades come together in the back just about, okay? And then you're feeling that left sitting bone in line or just pressing a little more towards that inner right heel as you open the right shoulder up. Belly is in, squeeze the quadriceps to lift the kneecaps and really root into all four corners of the feet. Feel a little lift in the arches here. All right, back to your warrior two. So start to bend into that knee, that left knee into half moon pose and shift that back right foot forward a little bit and then start to make your way, either using your block underneath your palms or your fingertips to the floor. Start to engage both quadriceps as you lift the right leg up, flex through the right toes, press through the right heel, stack the shoulders, stack the hips, belly's drawn in. All right, and you can look up or down. That is your choice. Everything's engaged, mindful of every part of your body. Okay, maybe you wanna take this into sugar cane, chapasana pose, you would bend that right knee very mindfully. And if you wobble and come out of it, just come back in and try again. Right hand to right foot, and then maybe you kick up and back. And then releasing, Ooh. and then slowly coming back into your warrior two, let's reverse that angle, straighten the front leg, and then float the palms to the earth. And doing what we did on the other side, plant the palms on the inside of the left leg. Keeping your legs in warrior two, start to work the, walk the palms into a down dog. Drop your head between the upper arms, reach the fingertips towards the upper outer corner, right corner of the mat, and breathe. All right, start to walk yourself back into a runner's lunge. So one foot on each side of the left leg, the right heel turns up and you're in a runner's lunge here, sink. And then from here, press it back to a downward dog. From downward dog, either step or hop to the front of your mat, forward fold. Half lift, inhale, heel toe the feet wider than the hips, start to bend the knees generously as you gaze at the front of the mat, coming into Malasana squat. So Malasana squat's not an easy one for you. You can take one or two blocks and place them under your bum. Might take some of the pressure off your heels if they don't touch in your knees, okay? Blocks are not necessary. Trying to get those heels down and just a long spine here. 
the elbows are pressing into the inner knees, maybe creating a little bit more of a hip opener here. Thumbs at the sternum. All right, shift forward, plant the palms, coming into a wide-legged Uttanasana forward fold. Heel toe to feet, hip width apart. Step back into your downward dog. Come up high on the toes with an inhale, all fours as you exhale. And let's come all the way down to our bellies, all the way down. Okay, and chin on the earth. Fingertips underneath the shoulders, palms down. Bring those feet as close together as you can. Let's do a couple cobra push-ups here. So pressing the hips into the earth, tuck the elbows towards the ribs, and then inhale into a cobra pose. And maybe this first one, you don't even use any palm strength. You use all back strength here. Gazing off the front of your mat. And then lower the forehead to the earth. Bring your fingertips to the upper corners of the mat, just above your shoulders. Fingertips to the outside edge of the mat, and now lift up. Let's do a few cobra push-ups. So inhale up, and then exhale, forehead down. Inhale up, using back strength. Exhale down. Inhale up, using back strength while stretching the front of the body, and then exhale down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale up, and then exhale down. And then press yourself up and back into a child's pose. And then coming up into an all fours, start to crawl the knees forward. Cross the ankles behind you and work your way down to your bottom. Okay. Let's get a seated forward bend in here. So I'm just going to come to staff pose, pulling the flesh away from my sitting bones, just to root the sit bones, palms face down, shoulders over hips, spine is long, growing out of the low back, pressing the crown of the head up. All right, let's work our way into a seated forward bend. So inhale the arms up. And as you exhale, let the heart press towards the big toes, heart hinging at the hips, and start to come down. Maybe planting your palms if you don't want to round into it. If your lower back is giving you a challenge, say this is where you stay. But if you want to, you can round into it. Taking deep breaths here. If it's uncomfortable to keep the knee, legs straight, you can always bring your palms underneath your knees. A slight bend in the knees is absolutely fine in this pose. In fact, it's more than fine. Honor your body. Only feeling this in the hamstring, the back of the body. And when you feel it in the hamstring on the back of the legs, not too high up. You want to feel it right in the middle. And as you inhale, gaze up at the big toes, plant the palms, lengthen your spine long and then start to walk yourself back. And a nice way to release the seated forward bend is to bend the knees, fingers face the glutes, and then gazing at your navel, just let's do a few hip lifts here. Inhaling up, exhaling down, pressing evenly into the feet, inhaling up, pressing into the palms evenly. One more time, inhale up, and exhale down. And then making our way onto our back. Have your knees bent, feet on the earth. Straighten the spine with an inhale. Maybe your hands are around your shins. Maybe bring them to the thighs. And then as you exhale, use your belly. Your belly's helping you come down. Engage the core. And then come all the way down, drawing those knees into the chest as you come down. And give your knees a squeeze to stretch the low back. All right, crossing the right leg over the left going to come into cow face legs. Okay. So now keeping the heels close to the 
um, thighs or glutes, wherever they are, will be a little bit less intense, but taking the um, heels away a little bit will give you a greater stretch in that right side, in that right hip, okay? And maybe your hands are on your ankles or your shins or below your knees, wherever you can grab a hold of. Just give yourself a little stretch here. Shoulder blades are against the mat. You're breathing nice and smoothly. And from here, release out. Keeping the right leg over the left knee, plant the left foot. Lift your hips up, shift the hips over to the right. Okay? And then bring your arms out to a T and let those knees just rest to the left. Okay? Now, if this is too much for your low back, you can always uncross the knees. You just do a knees down twist. Okay? Gaze can be up or gaze can be to the right, but make sure that right shoulder blade's not popping up off the earth. bringing that gaze back up towards the ceiling. Engage your belly and then lower that right hip, uncross the legs and bring yourself back to center. Okay. Hugging the knees into the chest. Let's do the opposite side now. Crossing the left leg over the right, okay? Then bending the knees, coming into cow face legs. Again, keeping the heels close in. It's just a little less intense and that might be where you are today, so honor that. Maybe your hands are below the knees, on the shins or on the ankles. And then if you bring the ankles a little further away and draw, draw them in, you're going to feel this a little more intense. And shoulder blades back and down. Feeling this on the left side more than the right. But every body is different, so you might be feeling it evenly on both sides. Releasing that out, keeping the left knee crossed over the right this time. Plant the right foot, bring your arms out into a T, and then shift your hips over to the left as you drop your knees to the right. Watching that left shoulder, making sure it doesn't pop up. Coming into your twist again, uncross the legs if this is too much, and just stack the knees for your twist. Gaze can be up, or your gaze can be to the left. bringing that gaze back up towards the ceiling. Engage your belly as you start to lower that left hip to the earth. Uncross your legs, even yourself back out. And one more time, hug those knees into the chest. Give that low back a squeeze. Maybe picking your head up, forehead towards the knees. Exhaling all the air out. And then gently inhale as you lower the back of the head back to the earth. Let the knees come all the way down. Before we go into Chavasana, just plant the feet mouth width apart. Just do some gentle windshield wipers. Side to side with the knees. Nice wide feet here. And whenever you're ready, settle yourself in for your Shavasana pose. Let your arms come down. Feet can be as wide as you want. Arms can be as wide out from the body or as close as you want. Just feel the clothes on your skin and the air on your skin as you sink into your mats. Noticing any sounds around you. Noticing a gentle rise and fall of the belly with the breath without changing the breath. Feeling your right shoulder and arm sink into the mat. The right side, your right hip. The right leg and the right heel sinks into the mat. 
left shoulder, left arm heavy in the mat. Left side, left hip. Left leg and foot sinking heavy into the mat. The whole back body's heavy. Back of the head sinking like a stone into the mat. And awareness to the top of the head, the forehead, the face, chin, throat, heart center, navel, whole body, thinking heavy, into the mat, and rest. Hit your pause button and stay here as long as you want. But when you are ready, bring awareness to the heaviness of the back of the body against the mat. And the lightness and spaciousness of the front of the body facing the sky. Bring your awareness to your breath and gradually deepen it. And when you are ready, take a big good morning stretch. Punch your fingers, punch your toes. It's so long here. Big breath in. And walk the knees to the chest. And roll to your right side. And press yourself up into a seated position. Again, root the sitting bones into the earth. Palms face down to the ground or up for receiving, or one of each. And open your heart and receive gratitude from yourself for, pra for practicing your no yoga today. Gratitude to yourself for practicing your yoga. And keeping your body, mind, an emotional body in a healthy place. Hands to heart center, thumbs at the sternum. The light in me bows and honors to the light in you. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.